problem 6.1-1. Determine the moment of inertia of the cross section about the horizontal axis. Here we have a cross section. It's T-shaped. We're given the dimensions. Let's do this problem. I'm going to begin by finding the neutral axis of the cross section. Now the neutral axis is the horizontal axis that passes through the centroid of the cross section. To find the neutral axis, I'm going to use this equation here. This equation gives me the distance to the centroid from some datum point that I arbitrarily select. I'm going to select right up here the top of the cross section to be the datum point. So I will calculate the location of the neutral axis relative to that datum point. To do so, I'm going to divide this cross section into two rectangles. And uh, what I'm going to do is for each rectangle, I'm going to sum up the location of its centroid relative to the datum point times its area. Uh, I'm going to do this for both of these two sections and then divide by the sum of the areas of the two sections. So I'm going to begin with section 1. And the first term I need is this y tilde. y tilde 1 is the distance from the centroid of section 1 to our datum line. And we can look up here at the problem. And that thickness of section 1 is 20 millimeters, so the centroid is going to be down a distance of 10 millimeters. So I will put 10. The next piece I need is the area of this piece 1. It has a base dimension of 275 millimeters and a height of 20 millimeters. The next piece is y tilde for piece number 2. And its centroid, the centroid of piece number 2, is right in the middle of the rectangle. And y tilde 2 is the distance from our datum line, which is at the top, down to the centroid. That is y tilde 2. And let's see, if the, uh, if the stem of this t is 300 millimeters, then the centroid is 150 millimeters down from, from below this intersection, plus an additional 20 millimeters, that's 100, 170 millimeters. And we need its area as well. Its area is 15 millimeters wide by 300 millimeters tall. And we're going to divide all that by the sum of the areas of the two parts. And we calculate that our distance y bar from the top of the cross section to the neutral axis is 82 millimeters. Now that we know where that is, we can find the moment of inertia of this section. To find the moment of inertia, I'm going to use the parallel axis theorem, which is here. The parallel axis theorem uh, states the following. Uh, first, we divide up the section into rectangular pieces. Here's I'm going to use the same two pieces. Now for each piece, I'm going to find the its moment of inertia plus the area of the piece times this dimension d squared. I'm going to add these up for all of the pieces. D is the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of the piece. First, I will calculate the moment of inertia for piece 1. It's a rectangle. The equation for moment of inertia of a rectangle is the base times the height, dimension cubed, divided by 12. Now, typically, when we uh, need moment of inertia uh, to find, uh, for example, stress in a beam, uh, we need units in the SI system, uh, we need units in meters to the fourth power. So I'm going to convert the units of millimeters to meters as I calculate the moment of inertia. And applying the equation for the moment of inertia for piece one, the base is 275 millimeters or 0.275 meters. The height dimension is 20 millimeters or 0.02 meters. Uh, that's cubed, divided by 12, and this is the value we get for moment of inertia of piece 1. Now let's calculate the value for a d squared for piece 1. The value for area for piece 1 is the base, 0.275 meters, times the height, 0.02 meters. And the value d1 is shown now in the diagram. It's the distance from the neutral axis up to the centroid of piece 1. And that's equal to uh, this distance of 82 millimeters minus half the thickness of piece 1. So that's 0 0.082 meters minus 0 0.01 meters. We square that, and this is the value for A, 
d squared for piece one. Now let's get values for uh, moment of inertia of piece two. The moment of inertia of piece two is equal to the base, which is 0 0.015 meters, times the height, which is 0.3 meters, or 300 millimeters. Uh, the 0.3 is cubed, divided by 12, and this is the value we get for moment of inertia for piece two. Now let's calculate the area times the d, d squared for piece two. The area for piece two is the base dimension, which is 15 millimeters, times the height, which is point, or, or this 300 millimeters, or 0.3 meters. And d2 is this dimension here. It's the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of piece two. And the distance to the top from the centroid is, we previously found to be 170 millimeters, or 0.17 meters. And then we'll subtract off then the distance from the top down to the neutral axis, which we found above to be 82 millimeters, or 0 0.082 meters. And the difference is squared times the area, and this is the value we get for a d squared for piece two. To get our moment of inertia, that is equal to the sum of all of this above. And this is our answer, and we're done.